Uh, you may notice that sometimes I don't talk that much. Here's the thing. Sometimes I don't talk that much about the black community or um, you don't see me make a ton of videos just sticking with blacks, right? Videos about black women, black men and relationships and all that. Now, in the past, I have said that I care about black relationships and uh, furthering the black community. That's all true, right? But in that same light, my content may seem to show that I tend to make videos just talking about topics, r random topics um, that I feel like talking about, but my I don't have the niche of black men and black community like the beautiful Kevin Samuels. Um, Reva TV. Are you right? Media man. Right. And sometimes sometimes the lead attorney. Right, but he's more he's he's more law based. Um, I'm more of what, what I'm more of what you see what Melanie King does. Now she talks about black women, just like I talk about black men. But for the most part, we make um, content on anything we see. Now she, hers is really niched into relationships. My content is more pop culture. I'm just trying to navigate through the world because you know I am younger than all of them. They're all if they're not they're all in their mid to late forties. Okay. Uh, I th actually think Melody King's in her early 40s, but, you know, the lead attorney, media man, they're in their 40s. They're older, right? And they grew up in more entrenched in the black community, unlike myself. OK, so I grew up around mainly, uh, mainly white individuals. So I grew up in a white town. I went to a white college and I still live in a white town right now. So. For at least only only about four years of my entire life was I around the black community for like an extended period of time. For the vast majority of my life, I've been around white people, right? So that's why it may seem like when I make videos, I it's, it's not like when I make a video on a white girl or a white guy or anything like that. To me, I don't really see that they're white. You know what I mean? I just see regular people. You know, I just, I just talk about them like I would anybody. Um, but you may notice when I talk about black men and black women, I put more of an emphasis to say black or this black person, right? Um, because I do care about the black image. And so when I make videos on black people saying something like, oh, this is racist or oh, this is that, um, I try to be like, hey, this is what the image that gets put out there. The reason I know what the black image is to some people, not all, but I can tell you what the black image to, is to a lot of people who aren't black is because I've been around people who aren't black. I know exactly how they talk about black people um, and I know how they feel about black people. And the vast majority of people I have come across, like I said, I've been around white people the vast majority of my life aren't racist. Right. But they do. Um, they do understand. They There's some things that they get wrong, but there's a lot of things that they understand that the, the, the black image that is put out there. Right. Um. For example, when I they they know that black women being single mothers is something that's celebrated, but they don't do it because they know why. They think it's commendable because they think us black men are not around. It is just most white people I know think about black women as single mothers and them being praised for it. But they think that the women are black. The, the reason there is black single mothers is because most black men are in jail we're deadbeat and most of us are just going out here having babies with every woman even though we know 54 percent of men have never child who have never fathered a child okay 660,000 black men are in prison but there's 20 million black men in america so out of 20 million of us walking around 617,000 of us are in prison guys that's not that's not half of us. That's not 40 of us. That's not 30%. That's not 20. That's not 10. Okay. What people think is that most of us are in jail from other communities. And so the reason I bring all that up is to say this. I believe I'm trying to take my words, try to make my words good here. I believe for me personally, for me to be the best content creator I can be. 
I'll stay in the conversations I can stay in. I can tell you about the conversations of what how the other communities see us black people and what they think about black women and black men. Okay? I what I what I hear about black women more than anything is that um them being single mothers and stuff like that, how they're getting the degrees and blah blah blah, and how black men have just fallen to the wayside. I don't hear a ton of people who think highly of black men because normally when they hear the context of black men, they hear it from black women. We don't have a lot of male spaces, black male spaces that talk highly about black men because even the black men are who are up there. They talk about the reason that black women can't pick black men is because we're not around. We're not good men to be around. We haven't stepped up our game, right? You got even other black men who talk about us like that. Okay. And even from my own experience, I tell you this and I mean it truly. I don't really care how white women necessarily, um, the white women who see some of us black men as thugs, right? I can tell you this, and it's just me being flat out honest. The reason I had such a hard time um, dating black women is because they treat me the worst amongst all races. Um, black women are the only women I can hear talk so down on black men, right? Now, obviously, there's people who are racist against black men, but that, like I said, I grew up in a whole white town. I grew up around all white people. The worst people I heard talk about me were obviously racist people, but I mean, next to that would have to be black women by far. And I didn't meet that many racist people, but almost every, and I'm not even, this is not hyperbolic. Almost every black woman I came across while I was growing up talked about us black men like we were trash. Even when I worked with a lot of black women, it was always, and I tell you, and I say this, um, it was always those niggas. That's why I hate when I hear black women say that, because that's how, you know, not even, I don't know a whole lot of people who call me nigga because I don't use that word, but black women would call me that all the time. Man, these niggas, all these niggas, these niggas, this, this niggas, that niggas ain't nothing. Niggas ain't shit. And I even made a video where I went on Omegle, which is not exist non-existence, but I went to Omegle TV and I talked to black women and I said, black women think niggas ain't shit. You know, I said, I said, why do you think black women think niggas ain't shit? I said that and instead of black women to come out and say, well, you know, um, it's not true. Oh, no, hold on, sorry. Let me back up. I said, why do black men? I said, why do black women have such a disdain for black men? Why do they feel like we're beneath them? Instead of them going, black men are kings or black men are great. Black men are wonderful. They didn't say none of that. They all said niggas ain't shit verbatim. You can go back and watch the video I put up. They said niggas ain't shit. And they just believed the lie. Even though black men still make more than black women, right? It's because when black women decided to get educated and by the way, black women are in the most debt when it comes to this stuff, but because black women decided to go get educated, they think they're far above black men when really all they have is a bunch of liberal degrees in student debt. Black women still aren't making more than black men. Black men make the amount of black men that make six figures is more than the amount of black women that make six figures for some reason. Even when I was younger, before this discourse was like as big as it is today, before black men actually started speaking up for themselves, black women always treated me the worst. Um, and I don't know why. It's just like, it's, it, and I, I, I shout out to Kevin Samuels because I remember him doing a, uh, um, a live stream where he talked about black men damn near have to be superheroes. And I'm going to be real here. Let's be in vulgar a little bit. But he said, not only do black men have to make a ton of money, we have to be romantics and we have to be able to have great sex and we have to have a big penis and we have to do all these other stuff just to be seen as great. And that's what I believe. Like, even though black men, even though we used to be incarcerated at a 33, 33% rate, we are now incarcerated at a one out of five, one out of five. And yet the narrative that black women still pushes that we're incarcerated even though black men have started making more money in this country, we are still seen as nothing to these black women. 
black women do not act the same around white men that they do around black men. And I've seen this over my lifetime, right? Okay. So with that being said, once again, I'm trying to keep this as straightforward as I can, but I'm just trying to give you a whole uh, thing of it. You notice even when I talk about white women or stuff like that, when I talk about baby mamas, I talk about white women within that because believe it or not. Now, I think single mothers get praised more in the black community, but the stories you guys hear me tell about baby mamas and drama and stuff like that. I'm always talking about white women. Always. So it's the one perspective that I can give is that I see the same thing that they talk about black women with as far as um, their standards and all this kind of stuff. I see the same stuff with white girls. Same stuff, right? So I can speak from it. I can speak from a perspective of being a black man in a white community. But I tell you, I see the same stories. Getting with a man, getting divorced. I can tell you how many white women I met that are divorced, right? I've met white women who've gotten with men who are the bad boys in prison and stuff like that. I've all the all the stories I've had of, I've heard of white men who cheat, right? Because black men always get told we cheat, but we cheat at almost the same rate as black uh, women. But at the same time, I hear all these different stories. I can't tell you how many white women I've came across who play that victim mentality like it's their fucking job. So many of them have talked about. Oh, well, if he did this or if he did that, I would be this and this is like, no. And I meet so many um, white women who are delusional. I, y'all remember I had that conversation with that blonde white girl who told me she was a nine and I had to laugh in her face pretty much. There's a lot of white women who are delusional who think they really are nines and tens. And so y'all will hear me talk about the exact same things you may hear coming from the black community. Same stuff. The only difference between me and them is I am normally talking about normally talking about my experience, which is more with white women. But the stories are exactly the same. Right. That's the reason you see when I make videos, I can make I can make a video on a white girl or make a video on a white guy or anything like that. To me, it's just it's the same stuff. It, it I'm just I, I t- and you notice what even when I do my uh, thumbnails. I never I don't tend to use black women in my thumbnails because I want to make it apparently clear apparently clear I want to make it clear that I am not vast majority of my content is not going to be about black women I'm not coming after black women vast majority of my content will be about either relationships it will be about people I think that are it, it, my, my thing is about relationships but not relationships in the romantic sense i talk about relationships with people so a lot of times i make videos talking about how somebody treated somebody else and how i found that despicable just like the last video i put up talking about that girl who was talking about ugly people i feel like that was the the, i can tell how she treats people that's the vast majority of my content is relationships however i can't really talk about my relationships how i feel about it on any black community Because I wasn't born in a black community. I was born in a white community. I was born around white people. I went to a white college. I am still in a town currently that's full of white people. I see maybe there's maybe three black people where I live that I see. It's in in conversation only. I don't talk to any black people like face to face. All white people, right? And I talk to a lot of white women. Where I in the jobs I've done in my lifetime. It normally it has a bunch of women in it. I told you about the time I worked at a school where it was me, one guy, and 300 white women, right? 300 women. I normally say 300 women, but it's like 300 white women. Now, I did work with some black women, but I didn't. I never had conversations with them. We didn't cross each other's path, right? And so I just want to make that uh, clear that I think that's why you'll see the style that you see me wear. That's why you'll see me wear a fedora, a flat brim fedora. And I can do these stuff. And sometimes I can go into my country voice and stuff like that because I am from Texas. uh, And I also grew up around 
a lot of white country boys. I know about big mud trucks and all that kind of stuff, four wheelers, dirt bikes. I grew up around all that all the time. So I have no idea. I'm not saying that this is every black community, but I don't understand the concept of necessarily. Now, obviously other areas are different, but I don't, the urban lifestyle that I hear about a lot, you know, I don't understand it. Soul food, cornbread, all that stuff. I did grow up with some of that cooking, but it's not something I saw a lot of. I only saw that on the holidays. For the most part, I just ate regular food. I, I went to white parties. You know what I mean? I I got drunk with white kids. I I just don't. The one time I went to a party that was majority black, and this is not me being that guy. I know I'm going to sound so uh, racist when I say it, but the only black party I've ever been to got shot up. And that was it. You know what I mean? And it's just the life that I live. I didn't choose to grow up in a white town. My parents chose that. Not me, obviously. I was a kid. Um, going to a predominantly white school wasn't necessarily my choice. It was the college that was in my city and it happened to be predominantly white in my city. Um, and then now living in a predominantly white town was where I could afford to live. Believe it or not, it wasn't, I didn't choose to live here because there was a low community of black people. This was the one city where mo- the vast majority of us make average salaries. So living in the city, if y'all know, living in this city is expensive. Anywhere you go, from Austin, Texas, to even living in Dallas, Waco, um, San Antonio, all these uh, big cities—they're expensive. Unless you want to live in the, uh, unless you want to live in the, um, I wouldn't say, unless you want to live in the projects. Just call it what it is. You want if you if you want to live in the projects, if you want to live where we call the trailer park. You know what I mean? And let me talk about that while I'm at it. So. I know there's always this concept of black people in the hood, right? Now, me growing up with all white people, I just knew white people and I knew trailer trash. Just like Eminem talked about, trailer trash. Right now, I never called anybody trailer trash. I thought that was highly disrespectful. I try not to be that kid. Not saying I was the nicest kid. I definitely had my issues. But I definitely don't remember ever calling anybody trailer trash. Um, especially I'm a black man in all white school. Not everybody looked highly upon me. Um... I think my sister got more of a thing, but not me. I don't. I feel like I just I took too much and I shouldn't have. I should have just been better about it. But I was I was just too shy. But nonetheless, so I grew up with there was wealthy white people and there was broke white people, and I fell in the middle of that. Me, my friends, we were middle class for the most part, you know, and that's it, and that's how it was. So I just knew broke kids and I knew non broke kids, and so. Um, even when I watch videos on TikTok and stuff like that, and you see me guys react to it, I can tell um, a white person from a person who grew, a white person who grew up broke. You know, I, I can see it. It's obvious. I can tell how they act, how they talk, how they are. Um, now, one thing I saw as I got older was black businessmen. You know, I saw that more as I started getting more on the internet, and it's a beautiful thing to see. So. When I think black people, I don't think hood. I don't. I don't think poor. I don't think broke. My first real look at black people were black people in college and black people who were businessmen. One of my great good friends um, back when I was still in college was a black man. He was a businessman. He was in shape and he wildly successful. So I don't know a, a, a whole life of broke black people like this concept that all of us are in the hood when we know that's not true so i am always so when i hear women when i met that had that video when i heard women say black niggas ain't shit it's just like it's it, i know it's a lie i saw too many great black men and i've seen too many great black men in my life today obviously i had my father my father's not hood my father's not no thug he ain't no gangster and a lot of my family i am still from a black family a lot of my black family we're not hood we're not, we're not at the bottom. We're not shooting up. We're not in the gangs. So I, I, I don't have a concept of black people who are just um, down and out. So when black women used to talk to me like they did, I just didn't get it. They made it seem like black men were at the bottom of the barrel. So now when I do make videos about black women and I see 
how they treat their kids, which I have seen. I have seen that. Um, how they treat their kids, how they get in fights and all that stuff. And they say all black women, obviously. But the black women I do see do that. Those are the black women I came across. I'm talking about that fiery, I don't need no man kind of stuff. I met a ton of black women like that who were just like that. One of the few black women I met that weren't like that was my friend. The guy who, excuse me, who was wildly successful. His wife was not like that. She was very much like me. We were very much like each other. We very much, hey, how you doing? You know, kind of people. Um, and that was just normal life. Not, you're, oh, you're, you sound like a white guy. Or, you know how it is. Oh, you sound like a white guy. Or you, you sound so proper. You, you, you're an Oreo. You're a black man on the outside. Why don't you? Oh, that stupid shit. You know what I mean? We didn't see each other as that. We were just, this is who we are. We're business people. Not me, because I'm obviously explained this many a times. I'm a loser. And by all, um, any metrics you want to use for me, I would be, I would call myself a loser. I'm not where I need to be. I'm living in an okay life, but far from where I want to be. So no, he, I would consider him successful. I would consider me. I could have been on that same route, fucked it all up, which is the story of my life. Trey fucking it up. And so anyway, I've seen all this stuff. This is what I've been through. Um, I'm around white people a lot of the time. I talk to a lot of white people. One of my best friends is white and well, he's white and Hispanic. And this is my experience. So when I talk about the stuff I talk about, know that I'm normally not ever trying to push down the black community or go after black women. I'm just giving you my experience. And that's why you don't normally see me talk too down on black men because I did not grow up in an area where black men were like that. I've always I grew up in a black family and I've been around black men and black excellence. That's why I find, but the black women, no matter what, I'm telling you this now, and it's just the truth. No matter what level I met black women on, from high school to middle school, to elementary school, to college, to the adult world, black women everywhere I go are almost always the same. I did not come across a ton of black women who I would consider black business women a lot of them were out there shaking that ass you know a lot of them were out there um let's just call it what it was fucking and sucking you know and and then when a guy like me comes across something like that i remember going to a club and having all these black women just it was just wild i don't know why that is and i got a little glimpse of that today i was watching listening to a live stream and some black women they just for some reason they get into even if no they're not from that area they're not from um the projects they're not from that life for some reason they get to college man or even when i said like i was in high school middle school whatever they want to go for these thugs they they start listening to the music they start listening to hip-hop and thinking that's what black masculinity is and that is what's wrong today when they black masculinity, from my point of view, is businessmen. That's what I think. I think businessmen. I don't think athletes. I don't think all that stuff. I think black businessmen who really have to go to school or really have to put their head down and do what they have to do. I don't think hip hop. I don't think thugs. I don't think somebody holding the Glock. But from coming from, and I still listen to hip hop, but coming from that culture too, I think black women, they hear that music, they hear how these black women are talking, they really think that a black man who could hold a nine and kill somebody is something to be proud of. And it's just not. It's, it's just not. Um, and I think oh man, I'm just being honest. I'm just not seeing it. I, I, I want this not to be true. And this is why I still talk about it. I don't see a lot of black women pushing other black women in the right direction. We still have sexy red being considered black excellent. It's a fucking disgrace, man. And I feel like black men are getting it. Like we don't look at offset. We don't look at uh, Quavo and be like, man, that's that's the life I want to live talking about shooting guns and all that. Now we may think about their wealth and they may be great businessmen as far as I don't know, but I don't think I don't hear Black men being like, yeah, I want to be a thug. That's why uh, most of us aren't in jail like you think we are. Most of us are not in gangs. Most of us are just a regular black men living regular black lives. Like, my father is from, my father's in his 60s. 
he's from that segregation and all that, but my father don't act crazy. So I don't know where that comes from, but I think black women, they see all that, uh, having sex and being virtuous and uh, virtuous, being promiscuous and all that kind of stuff. And they just see it as something to be held up to a standard, something to be, uh, upheld as a, uh, um, as a gift. And then when things go south and all they have is kids and no man, and all they got is Sparky. They go right to, well, niggas ain't shit. They got seven kids. Hell, let's just keep it normal. They got they got a few kids. They got three kids, two baby daddies, and then a man who's making fifty thousand dollars a year comes up to her and even says, "You know what? I know you got two kids, but I'm willing to give you a chance." And what do black women go to? Boys don't deserve no pussy. I know that's right. They go right to a six-figure man, and that's why the vast majority of I believe black women will end up by themselves. Because that's what it goes to. They go out there, lower their value, and then come straight to Broke boys don't deserve no pussy. I know that's That's right. my experience. I, I told you when I told you guys I worked at a call center with women, and I told you that there was that the uh, women would treat me as if I was lower than them, even though we're making the same money. It was black women who said a lot of that shit to me. A lot of that came from black women. Of, oh, he can't be with me. Long ass nails, big ass eyelashes. That's all they do. I tried, man. But every time I tried to get with a black girl, it just was immediately, oh, he's not this. Oh, you're not that. Oh, you're not, you're not, you don't make enough money. It's like, what are you talking about? We make the same fucking money. Yet, I can't be with you. I remember a girl who weighed like 300 pounds, 300 pounds. She was bigger than me. And she said that niggas ain't shit. And I already know she's alone. She's pregnant now. She got pregnant. And I think she got a couple kids now. Do you think she got a marriage? Hell no. She got. That's all she got at the end of the day. So. I don't know. That's that, that that's that's where I fall in the black community. I know my experience with black women. So when I talk about black women, it's not me coming for the black women and all. I'm telling you how black women have treated me. Like I'm the bottom of the fucking barrel. Black women have treated me so bad. Even when white girls would tell me, I'm, I'm talking about when I was younger. But even white women would just flat out tell me, you know what? My dad doesn't want me to date black guys, and that was the end of it. You know what I mean? And it's like, whatever. Because my parents, they're not necessarily keen to us dating outside of the race. We all know that. We all got guys quit acting like us black people act like our black parents don't want us to date black people. They do. A lot of the black parents want us to date black people. They're not like, telling us, hey, go go date white guys. Then uh, Go date white women or go date Hispanic women. They're not telling us to date outside of race. So I understand that sometimes white people want to be like, oh, no, I, I want to date inside my race because I, I had parents who were similar to that. They didn't outright say it, but you know, we know guys, okay? Let's not act stupid. So, but that's all I got from them was, no, nah, my, my parents would prefer me to date somebody white. Okay, cool. In the conversation, I don't care that much. But black women, oh, you you broke. Oh, you broke. Oh, you you just a dusty nigga. Oh, you this. It's like, damn, all you have to do is say, no, you ain't got to go uh, breaking down my whole damn character just because I don't make six figures. You know what I mean? And back then, we didn't call it six figures. They just said I wanted a rich guy. We now have pinned it, pinpointed it down to a certain amount. And women who say six figures don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. They just hear six figures and don't even think about what it takes to make that. They can't quantify it. They don't know what jobs it takes to do that. They don't know what skills. Nothing. They just hear that number and think it. But and that's white women too. Um, but I'll say this last thing: the what the, the main difference I've seen between white women. And black women, like I said, this is my experience. The only, the, well, not the only, but the main difference I see is when white women lose, like when we, white women hit their thirties, they throw all that other shit out the window. A lot of white women I met, when they start cracking those thirties, they start going, "Okay, let me just get with somebody." I see so many white women who, when I was growing up with them, they're like, "Oh, I gotta have a man who makes this. I gotta have a man who makes that." But a lot of these white women I see on my Facebook, as soon as they crack them thirties, they just say, "Fuck all that." I just want to be happy with somebody. And they go marry your average guy. Not a not a handsome man, not a Chad. One of the finest girls I knew in college. 
she's probably one of the prettiest women I knew in college. She got with some regular looking white guy. He was one of, he wasn't my friend, but he was a cool cat, but he wasn't special. You know what I mean? He's not the best looking man. He, he looks like the average looking white man. And that's who she married. She was, I'm going to call her an eight or nine. She was that beautiful. But guess what? At the end of the day, when her eight, when that, that, when that, then that clock start ticking for her. Oh, she said, fuck this. I think she's 28 now. Got married. All the white women I see as soon as they start to hit, get close to them thirties. Oh, they give all that shit up and they get right to marriage. They're like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to give it the man who's making enough. They're not, they're not getting men who make, who are lawyers and shit like that. No, they give it a man who makes enough, right? Black women, for some reason, they get to those thirties and they think their value goes up instead of being like, oh shit, I got to get married. They go right to. Both boys don't deserve no pussy. I know that's right. They go right to that. Go right to that. And y'all know what happens. They go right back to school. I'm a PhD. And that's the end of it. And the next thing you know, they're in their 40s all by themselves. And I see that happen. I see that happen with the black women. I do come across these days and it's not a lot, but the ones I see hit those 30s, they go. I don't know what the fuck happens, but instead of going, you know what? I should just shut, you know, <laughs> I should just shut it down. Throw all that other stuff out the window and get married and start a family. Nope. They go right back to school. I'm a PhD. Go be a nurse. Or go get a degree in administration or something. Making fifty two thousand dollars a year or something like that. And they think they're a boss queen and then they end up in their forties and it's all over. I see that. I'm not gonna call nobody out, but damn it, I I grew up in a black family. You don't think I know black women in my family that ended up like this? Hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah all alone by themselves and that's and they're gonna die by themselves because they for some reason even though they get fatter they still think uh you know what i can still get a man no you can't <laughs> no you can't you, you can't get older and fatter and get better that's just not how it works but these black women i come across are so delusional right and that's where the separation happens for me and that's what you'll hear in my content I don't see a ton of white women hit the 30s and end up by themselves. Now, things may change. I know I talk about in 20, 30, 45 percent of women will be single and childless. And that statistic may happen. But as far as what I've seen, most women I see or the women I see, and I mean, not say most women because statistically, I don't know. I don't have those numbers. Women I come across who hit their 30s. White women, they just they, they fix it. And Hispanic women. From what I see, they, they get married pretty young. I see a lot of Hispanics, uh, girls and men, they're normally married in their 20s. Um, and then they just, I don't really even meet that many single Hispanic women at all, ever. So I don't, I, I, their society is different. Uh, I can't speak too much on that, but from the Hispanic women I've come across, I rarely ever meet one who's single. Um, and if they are, <laughs> something's wrong. And white women, they may, be, may be crazy until they're 30. If you come across that. Uh, even me growing up, even in growing up in a white community, other white people would say she, if she's 30 and alone, something's wrong. I heard that all the time in the white community. That's where I get it from. And then when I started listening to the black community, when I started hearing it from other black people, then it But to see the difference was we thought something was wrong with that in your 30s. For some reason, when I hear from black women, it's like you're, being in your 30s and being single, is something to be celebrated. Like, yes, you dodged all these bullets. I'm like, no, you didn't. You're just fucking insane and nobody can deal with your ass. Anyway. That's 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 why I I, I that's what that's what I wanted to come across and say is just that this is why I don't talk about the black community too much. Because even when I do, it sounds harsh, doesn't it? But I don't, I'm only giving you what I know. I know the statistics behind a lot of this, but I'm also giving you what I really have experienced as well. And I can tell you, that's how it sounds. But it sounds like I'm, I'm coming against my own people, but I'm not. But like I said, you rarely ever hear me talk down on black men because a lot of the black men I said I came across were not black men who were out there banging and all that other stuff. You know what I mean? I always came in my black men who showed me black ex excellent. I've had wonderful black mentors in my life. So I, I think highly of black men. And the only reason I talk, the only reason I talk about black women the way I do is because the way they treat black men. There are wonderful black women out there. But most of the black women I met that I even say, man, she's she's amazing. They're normally single. 
the black women I've came across, I'm like, man, she, she's something cool. Single. And I didn't even th think about it till I started really looking to the black community and other black brothers started telling me, hey, man, hey, these black women, the reason they alone is because of the way they act. So anyway, that's it. That's all I got. I don't know if I even explained myself well, but I hope I did. All right, goodbye.